We have to make a point to keep our faces turned towards the camera because we have a tendency to just turn completely to one another and then the camera can't find a face to focus on. Welcome back guys. Not to the fourth episode of Jess's interview show. What is this, the first episode of my interview show? I never knew I wanted an interview show, but... You get all kinds of things you didn't know you wanted to be married to me. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? <laughs> oh, sweet Maya, we kind of coordinate. Actually... Look. Oh, gosh. <laughs> We're not matching that much. I have black pants on, you have blue jeans. All right, you ready? Let's do this thing. Okay, let's do this thing. I have no idea what you're gonna ask me. I felt like it would be a fair playing field if I didn't make you tell me. Because <laughs> I keep springing interviews on you. Yeah. I'm trying to be considerate here and fair. So for those of you who have missed them, I've been doing these sit down interviews. I did one with Maya. Uh, I did one with my kids, with my boys. Uh, Malia's here now, so we're gonna have to do an interview with Malia. Mm, that's um, actually be a good one. And I just did an interview with Ben Turn. And then I came to her and said, I think we should do an interview of you. Of me. So you guys hear from me all the time, but this is a little different format. I had a lot of questions, but it's early in the morning because rain's coming and we've got to get this done. <laughs> so like I'm really having to turn my brain on right now. It's not because I don't have questions. Like when Jessica does a garden tour and it's like first thing in the morning and the sun's out and she's all bubbly and happy, that's actually who she is. <laughs> There's a reason why I'm not out there doing garden tours the early in the morning. I'm not a morning person, so I'm gonna get my I gotta get myself in the game. I think there are some questions that are probably gonna be very similar to the ones you asked me. Question number one: What are you going to miss the most about this property? I'm really not good at this format because I'm like a really slow responder to things. So she likes springing it on people, <laughs> right? To other people, but like personally, I'm very like. When I do podcasts and stuff, I'm actually extraordinarily nervous if I don't know what they're gonna ask me. I'm not good like on the fly. I gotta think about things. I mean, I guess my first response to what I will miss the most about this farm is the garden, you know, just because we've put so much into it. This is such a personal space to me. I remember this one time sitting at the front before we were even, it was even to the point of completion that it is now. And I remember thinking like, you and I could build anything together. Like this was such a, like having a vision and bringing it forth and, and taking the years that it took to make it. So I think that's like, as far as like things here, I would say the garden. I mean, obviously central Arkansas has been my home the majority of my life. So making such a big move, we really feel led to do it. We feel like it's the right thing to do. We feel like we're doing what we're supposed to do. I'm not second guessing that South Carolina is, is home for us, but leaving what has been home has, is hard. So that's not really about this farm per se, but the location of this farm is hard for me to leave. You've, Cause it's somewhat like that. Well, you were in the military. You moved not all over the that, place. Not just that, but like even as my family, we, I was born in Dallas, but then we lived in Tennessee. In well, we were born in Dallas before my dad was in the military, and then we yeah. were in Tennessee, and then we went to California after my dad yeah. joined the Navy, and then we came back, which is an interesting story. We were actually on our way back to Indiana, yeah. and stopped <laughs> over for a visit, and it's, stayed there for 20 years. So. I know, but that wasn't, like, <clears throat> I, I moved into a house 10 miles from here whenever I was six years old. And like, this has been like my whole life. Right. Like the house we lived in whenever we first got married was a house I grew up in we rented from my dad. And yeah. so my whole, the majority of my life, you know, lived in Texas a little while, lived in Tennessee for a couple of years, but the majority of my life has been within like a 20 mile radius of right here. And so- Except for a couple of short stints. Yeah, that's right. A little while in Texas, a little, and like some in South Arkansas. I've had family down there, but the majority of my life has been right, right. here. And so that's, that's actually really hard for me to leave. Like everywhere feels foreign to me. Like I, I think people who have traveled a lot maybe don't feel that way, but if you've lived in the same place your whole life, like everywhere feels foreign. Like this is, this is familiar and everything else is foreign. And so I'm really kind of stepping out into a foreign place. Now, South Carolina has really come to feel like home. Like I am homesick for this place I've never lived, which I can't even describe why that is or how that is. But there is still a sacrifice to say like, okay, I'm gonna step out of this comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Cool. <laughs> I'm mustering as much excitement with my responses as I can. Yeah, you're doing good, you're doing good. What are you most excited about in moving to our new place? 
So like we have this really big dream, taking this influence that's been put on our life through you know YouTube and, and this brand and this thing that we've been given, I, we feel like to steward, <clears throat> and taking that into a place and like making a difference with it. And like, I just imagine having our coffee shop, I imagine having eventually our learning center. I imagine our kids having the opportunity to really grow up in this really small, close-knit community. And all of those things together, like, I just anticipate uh, the growth in community. Like, that's the thing that I'm most excited about. Well, what about the farm? What thing about the new farm are you most excited about? Cow. Cow. <laughs> I was so excited to have a cow. This property it was never conducive to keeping a we cow. We never even considered bringing a cow here. It's just so rocky and the grass is hard to grow and all of that stuff. Now, I think that with the work that we've done with taking trees down and working on building, I think that with some intentionality, maybe at some point a small cow could be kept here, but and we just decided never to do it. But we got lush pastures and I'm so excited to have like- You're more excited about cow. a cow than you are about a new garden completely reimagined I'm very surprised at that answer to be entirely honest that feels daunting to me I am very excited for it but like I like I'll start crying thinking about this why does it feel daunting I mean you just <laughs> tell me where to put them and then we'll put them there I got you do you know you know how we what talked it, about you grow the things, I'll build the things. <laughs> you know how we talked in your interview about the little teddy bear and the big teddy bear. Mm -hmm. I have not quite gotten to the point that I can see past this teddy bear yet when it comes to the garden. Like I love our new land; it's amazing. It has completely eased my concerns. Oh, look at the hummingbird. Oh well, yeah. I, I just I can't I can't quite see it yet. Okay. I'm sure I will love it. I'm sure it'll be epic. I have some amazing ideas, but as of right now, like I can't quite see it yet. I think I'm gonna have to really detach myself from this garden. Like I think I'm gonna have to be away from here before I can like really fully dive into building that one. I don't know how to describe it. I'm very, <laughs> like a garden is a very per personal thing. Like I think to, to build on that, like a cow is something we've never done before. Like it's not like we're trading one thing for another. Like, mm -hmm. the garden, I have to let go of something to have, so I think <clears> that <throat> it'll just take a little while to... That's okay. That. I am excited about it, but... I know, can see it, so. kind of <laughs> Yeah, I know. You're much better at visualizing things than me. What's something else people want to know about? <laughs> the scoop. I can't look at the camera. I can only look at you. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> trying to look at the camera, but it's not as pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I seriously keep catching I'm trying to keep my face turned so that the focus can like stay on us. <laughs> but I do like it. <laughs> the last time it kept focusing behind us, so. People still liked it. Yeah. They watched it. Okay, question number three. What is a farming method that we did not implement here that you want to implement on the new place? I want to do, um, Rotational grazing, like from the very beginning, I want to like rotate pastures, really focus on building soil instead of depleting it. There's a lot of stuff we just didn't know when we got here. Like I knew nothing about like sustainable agriculture whatsoever. Like I just wanted a chicken coop. Like I'll probably never have another static chicken coop. Like yeah, I, I love know. the movable chicken coop. Um, I mean, I love the way that the static chicken coop looks. Absolutely. It just doesn't. Right, but being able to move it, build soil, like, mm -hmm. I really want to just hit the ground running on soil building. I would really like to, like, nail composting. That's something we've, like, we've always just piled our animal bedding up, and most of our scraps go to the, the animals. We'll probably keep doing that, but piling bedding up and kind of moving it, and eventually it breaks down to soil, but, like, Charles Dowding's composting method with, like, bays and all that stuff, and it's well, also timed. Yeah, I talked with your dad about that portion over by the original barns that are there, uh -huh. the big ones. There's a big section that we're talking about pouring bays, like concrete bays, wide enough for the tractor bucket to come in and turn them. You see what I'm saying? Cool. So, yeah. you, so it has a concrete wall on the back, so when you push in, you actually get a full scoop and turn it. Yeah, I would like to really like nail composting. That would be really cool. Um, that's something we really haven't implemented here. 
That'd be cool. And really just like more permaculture type methods. You know, I've watched different people that have food forests and stuff like that. That's really neat. Maybe doing something like that. And we've never had an orchard here. You know, like we have a couple, we failed miserably at fruit trees just because we placed them poorly. Um, we didn't really get our perennials in on the front end. Like there are things like that that I, I've learned now that I really want to do that well. You really desired this life. And I know in lots of our conversations we've talked about how you wanted this for your children. Why did you so strongly pursue this lifestyle to for our kids? I think whenever we started, like when I think back to like living in town and when I was working like an office job and reading blogs and like looking at different homesteading things and shopping at farmers markets and gathering skills and imagining chickens and dairy animals and all that stuff. I think I I think at that time I I had a different idea of what it would be for our kids than actually what it's played out to be. But I love what it's played out to be. So I thought I would be like removing my kids from like modern culture. Like I thought, well, we're going to homeschool and we're going to do these different things we're going to you know i just thought we're going to have this really contained little home life what i didn't take into f consideration at that time is that my children are individuals and uh you know like they like my oldest son is extraordinarily social and like he desires a show social life and i i don't think that i really had community factored in like i think i was imagining our homestead and the thing is if is if it was just me and me and you like, I think we could live an extremely, like, contained home life and be, like, I'm totally introverted. Like, I'm one of those people that, like, has to force myself into community because I recognize the value of it. But it's, it's, not, it's not easy for me. It's not something I deeply desire is connection. Um, but I know it's something that everybody needs. But my kids have kind of pushed me out of that. Um, the thing that I, that I now recognize is so valuable about this is that like my kids have this understanding of food and work and like vision of, of a family together saying, we're gonna build this thing because it's valuable because of X, Y, Z and then building it. Like my kids understand like, hey, you can set your heart on something and you can say, this is what I'm called to, this is the value in it, and I'm going to go after it, and just commit yourself in however many years it takes, and whatever work it takes. And I would say that this farm has laid a foundation in our children to, like, build the life that they desire to live. And for me, you know, I've got kids that they have no desire to live on a farm. You know, they talk about wanting, like Jackson wants to travel the world. Asher wants to live in a city. And I don't know what the little boys will end up really deciding in their hearts they want to do. But whatever it is, I feel like because we chose this, we taught them intentionality, drive, and being able to create something because you think it's valuable. And I think they'll always be foodies, which is also <laughs> a plus <laughs> that I really like. <laughs> kids are foodies and I love it. <laughs> Most of them. I mean, even the boys that are picky, like Toby's real picky, even our picky kids, whenever we cook something, they're like, did we raise this? Like, they know there's yeah. value in that. Plus their palates will develop. Yeah. <laughs> we hope. <laughs> Let's see. So one thing that's fascinating about you that I personally don't like know how you do it and I think probably a lot of people are the same way, is in your ability to construct, like, what do you call it, wax poetic? Yeah. Like, <laughs> how, like, how does that work? Do you just, like, <laughs> see words floating around and you just start, like, tying them together? Like, I'm just, like, curious, because, like, when you say, like, we're talking about the future garden, and I'm like, well, I can see that. You know what I'm saying? I can see the designs and right. I can see those things, like, and so then I can then produce it in writing, and like using your words the way that you do like what's the process of I mean of constructing that the only I mean it's just the way that I think I think it's just the way that you think is very uh, methodical very administrative and I think that's just the nature of giftings is that it's kind of wired I I do remember um, 
I remember being a senior in high school and I was living in El Dorado and I was going to school down there and I would drive in the morning to my cousin's house and I would ride to school with my cousin Josh and I would drive over these train tracks and I remember um, at the time I was in like a class I don't even remember the teacher's name I wish I did she was very influential you know and I and I don't remember her name but um, I remember driving over these train tracks and having this line just roll through my head every time about lumbering over the train tracks and the sun shine you know it's just very this poetic line um, and this teacher at the time was the one who kind of like pointed out to me like hey you know most people don't think like that like a lot of people don't have constant poetry like running through their head but um i i do i don't know like, I'm, i don't all know. areas of your life all the time so I like can. so give me a like, <laughs> I want you to wax poetic it's a lot. <laughs> i want you to wax poetic right now grocery shopping well, I mean, that's not, I can't, I'm not in the grocery store. I can wax photo about this garden right now. It's, it's more like, it's not, it's not like, oh, I could wax poetic about anything at even, any given time. But like, yes, there's usually poetry that's easily accessed in my mind. No matter what you're doing? I mean, more or less. Hmm. Like. Maybe, it, give me an example while we're sitting in the garden. It's a lot easier with the written word. Um, we'll write it down and then we'll read it. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is, that makes me nervous. Um, sitting in the midst of what they'd built, they laughed as the rain came falling down on a lush garden on the 1st of June. A man and a woman preparing to leave climbing vines and blooming flowers and budding fruit for the possibility of something unknown, for more climbing flowers, for more blooming vines, for more budding fruit, for more than they could even imagine. They were willing to let this go. And the rain fell on these things. And oh. they shared it with the world. Mm. <laughs> yeah, like that. It is easier whenever I'm writing. <laughs> I feel less embarrassed. So are you like visualizing writing that and then just saying uh, it? No, not really. I mean, just, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, how do, how do you think methodically? I don't know. I mean, it's just there. And that's just something I, I, I am, I am poetic. My heart is poetic. Like, that's the only thing I know how to describe it. My heart is poetic. That's and I do, I am very poetic. Like, I keep a prayer journal. My prayers are very poetic. I mean, it's just all the time. Like I'm pruning tomatoes and like just poetry. <laughs> and I don't know. I don't know why that is. I, I do. I do think of sometimes like writing poetry books and stuff like that. But it's. I don't know why. But it's hard whenever I'm trying to like to write poems. Like it's hard to. I like got do so write. So you really just poems. need something that can just record your thoughts and then put it in writing. Yeah, more or less. One day. <laughs> One day. <laughs> One day technology. Elon Musk will probably. <laughs> It'll be like this little thing you put on and then it just records your thoughts. <laughs> that could be dangerous for some people. Yeah, definitely. I don't know that that would be a great invention, but... I have learned to appreciate that. That used to be something I was extremely embarrassed of. I know that's crazy, but like, I, because I would just like start talking about something and people would be very like, oh, pish posh, you know, or like kind of... People are just have a tendency to like crush what they don't understand. And so, you know, like people would be like, basically like, why are you like that? You know, like, don't you think that's a little extreme? Because I would just speak so, so, like, f it would be so flowery about the grocery store. It would be, you know, like, something, it would just strike me. And the thing is, is when you think like that, and when I do, I mean, I just experience life with rose-colored glasses, and I, I have learned to guard that as a gift from God. Like, I want to experience life in rose-colored glasses. I want to experience the people that I meet as the most beautiful people ever. And, like, you know, just everything being so wonderful that you can get swept off your feet by the beauty in the grocery store of just humanity and all of that like i really do feel that way but for a long time i was like um i was embarrassed of it and like there was a long time that i tried to like quell that and truly like when i look at the period of my life where i wasn't appreciating that part of myself because i had learned to like 
be embarrassed of it because of some of the responses of the people in my life. Um, that was the time that I was really honestly dealing with like depression and a lot of anxiety and stuff like that. So I feel like embracing that beautiful romantic view of things has let me live a life that's extremely joyful, but it's just learning to just live making space for who you are, I guess, you know, like I don't really know exactly how to describe it. That's pretty cool though. I definitely did not think that way. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'm like, crap, it's raining. I can't get a lot done today. <laughs> I really wish it wasn't raining because I have this to-do list to do. You know, we just have to move a farm in like less than nine weeks. No biggie. And the rain came falling down on all of my plans. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> all right, let's give, let's go with what, and you do this a lot, but you have to do it for the interview because everyone did it. What is a piece of advice for everybody? Uh, An unexpected piece of advice. It cannot be like, egg in the hole. <laughs> I did make everybody do a that. A piece of advice that you have not given on YouTube before. Oh my gosh, Jeremiah, like my whole channel is hey, advice. You, I know, so you gotta go up a level. <laughs> my piece of advice sort of coincides with what I was just <clears throat> saying. I would say, don't fall for the lie that you have you have to settle i guess you know like don't i talk to so many people even like even sharing on youtube when we share about having big dreams and like desires and all this different stuff and i mean people will be like well it's easy for you to say that because you haven't lived my life and i've you know that's not been my experience and everything doesn't work out well for everybody and all that and like for a long time, that kind of made me feel like I needed to not share. Like, just the extraordinary nature of our life and, like, the way, like, my dreams have just come true. And, I, and you know, I, I, I count that to the goodness of God, but 12 years ago, I passed out in a snow cone parking lot because I'd just given plasma to get $35 to put in my car. You know, like, that was not that long ago. That was There's even more stuff, even more recent than that. Yeah, there have been traumatic losses and great struggles and lots of work, lots of work lots of and so much pain. And there have been so many points in the story that it's easy to discount whenever we're saying, hey, like the desires of your heart matter and keep imagining, you know, I did that devotional infinitely more. Even that like recently somebody tagged me in that and said hey you should come back and watch this now even that which was two years ago seeing what's happened between then and now it's like whoa I genuinely believe like we define the ceiling in our life you know like we we define this is enough for me and to say that it's not enough I, I mentioned this in a vlog recently like it's this walking between contentment and expectation and it's this fine line. Like being content deep in your heart but not settling. Like this is, like I can't ever remember being like, okay, this is the best I'll ever have. Like wilder still, I mean that's what this tattoo means. That's what that, that word in my heart is, is that like I, I wanna see if in my life, in my little human life, like if I never say, all right, I've got, I've arrived, here it is. This is this is the biggest impact I'll ever make. This is the, you know, this is the most I'll ever be able to give my children. This is the closest my marriage will ever be. This is the most I'll ever understand about God. Here I am, you know, like at the ending point. Like, I don't think that's how we're supposed to live. And so when I say don't settle, I don't mean don't become, I'm like I don't want anybody to say, okay, I'll become discontent. Like, always be content. It is a contradictory thing to say, stay content, but don't settle. But like, I'm content to wax poetic that the rain is falling on the plants. I, I'm content to be wooed in the grocery store. But like, there's more, there's always more. And the more that I'm willing to like yearn for, the more that I'm gonna be, that I'm gonna have to give. Does that make sense? I don't know if it does to everybody, but like, that's really it for me. Like, don't ever decide I now have the best I ever will because I think the moment that you decide that is the moment that it becomes true. And so I think having that 
that settled contentment in your heart while always believing that there's greater still to discover in this life and beyond it. I, I just think that that is such a, a open-handed way to live that you'll always be receiving like greater revelations and bigger dreams coming true and like as soon as the dreams come true then you have greater dreams and like I just I hope that I get to live the rest of my life that way cool <laughs> and the rain fell down <laughs> alright last question oh there's one more okay after building this farm in this garden and working it for many years, how has doing this married with your faith and helped those two things grow in tandem, if that makes sense? Like, or has it not? Oh, I mean, I definitely look you at... You get what I'm saying? Like, the garden with your faith and then your faith growing while doing the garden well i mean like i look at the 28 year old that moved into this property that's how old i was right <laughs> i don't know how old are we now <laughs> sometimes i'm not sure yeah that's right i was 28 when i moved in here um you don't look a day over 29 <laughs> yeah right um I was 28 when I moved in here. And when I look at that version of myself, I mean, there's there have been so many lessons and so much growth between then and now. I would say that in the seven years that we've lived here, a lot of the things that I conceptually believed before became real. Like, I had the head knowledge then, and like, I, I chose to believe things that I had never seen. I chose to believe that God would do things that I'd never seen him do. I, I chose to have dreams, even though I hadn't really seen the grand fulfillment in that. Um, I mean, before we came here, I think the thing that I had really grabbed hold of is, you know, I was, I, I've shared this before, but I was like, me, there was like a, I had like a medical documented, like healing, like a really miraculous healing. Like I was supposed to be on dialysis by the time I was 30 and different things like that, that um, actually was genuinely healed from. Um, where there's like, d there's documents of a lot of scar tissue in my body that then wasn't in my body and like things that were irregular that were then normal with my urinary tract and stuff. And, um, so I had that. I definitely had this thing of like, okay, like this really is, this can really happen. This is true. And it wasn't because of those issues, I wasn't supposed to be able to have kids. So I had my kids. So like, I wouldn't say that coming into this, I had didn't have anything solid, but over the last seven years, like what we've experienced here, I mean, down to feeling led to do YouTube. I mean, I remember the day that I came from, I was journaling on the back porch and I marched over next door and you and your mom were sitting at the table and I said, I'm going to do YouTube like it's my job and it's going to, it's going to be what funds our vision. And, uh, okay you know like and y'all were like all right and like you were super supportive <laughs> i mean like you never have argued with me when i come and say stuff like that but, but i mean honestly but i, I made know. videos for the next few months that like nobody watched yeah you know and uh i don't know like things like that when things like that happen and then the follow-through happens and then the next thing you know you're moving to 27 acres and you're getting ready to build a new farm and you're taking half a million subscribers with you and like when stuff like that happens man it makes you brave as all get out mm. i would say that the thing that has grown as far as my faith goes is that when i came here it was like a really personal thing like in the depths of my heart because of those private things that had happened that private healing those private things like in the depths of my heart, I had a concreteness to my faith because of what I'd experienced. But this whole thing, the last seven years, has made me like crazy brave. That's the thing that's grown. I don't know if that's exactly what you were asking, like with the garden growing. I mean, obviously, like a farm and agriculture just wildly exemplifies the parables and different things like that because i feel like in the time that like we read the bible and we read these agricultural parables like that wasn't necessarily those weren't spoken to make things more obscure they were spoken to make things more relatable in a lot of cases because people would have understood they became that obscure. right they became obscure because we don't grow our food anymore like as a culture and so 
coming back to that and reconnecting with that. I just, I don't know anybody that can come in a garden and experience the multiplication of a garden and not be amazed. Like, no matter what their belief system is. I mean, it's just, like, stunning the, the provision that exists in a garden. Uh, but for me, it just concreted a lot of things. It concreted a lot of understanding that before was just an idea. Is that good? Is that, is that what you meant to ask? I just wanted to get your answer. <laughs> Whatever that answer looked like. So, yes, that is what I meant to ask. I feel like that was a pretty good interview. I do too. There was a lot of good info. Yeah. And poems. <laughs> I mean, yours are better than mine, but <laughs> mine was not bad. Thank you for interviewing me on your interview show. Thank you for my uh, for being on my first and my last <laughs> episode of my interview show. <laughs> I like doing interview shows. I, I know you do. I, I bless you to keep doing it. <laughs> but this was my only goal, was to interview you to get your thoughts. Because how are you going to interview yourself? Which, that would have been a funny video. You in one outfit, feel like giving the answers. <laughs> you in another outfit. I'm not that good at editing. Filming the questions and then you guys talking back and forth. Come on, that would have been good. I'm not that good at editing. <laughs> yeah, friends. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out with us today. We bless you. Until next time.